the, the other thing that I think it's important for people to know is uh, one of the strategies that the companies, the employers will use is after you're hurt, they'll say something like, hey, we're going to keep paying you your full wages, just don't hire a lawyer, mm -hmm. right? right. Uh, and so the employer will keep paying the full wages. Now, in the meantime, what they're doing behind the scenes is they're trying to figure out how to eliminate the person's legal rights. See, this is all a, this is all a big yeah. tactic. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about maritime law, but let's make some distinctions here because we're saying maritime law, but we've also said offshore injuries, and we might have even thrown in the Jones Act. Right. So we talk about all this stuff all the time, but we know it. So what is it to someone that has no idea that should, especially in, this business, or in the industry, what should they know about the differences? It, well, you know, the, there's, a, there's kind of a, uh, people call it admiralty law or maritime law. And that, that, those phrases kind of cover a lot of territory. So ba basically, if you're hurt on the water, if you're working for a company whose job it is to do stuff on the water, then the chances are really good that you're going to be covered by maritime law. Now, under maritime law, there are different kinds of laws. There's the Jones Act. There's the Longshore and Harbor Workers' Compensation Act. There's general maritime law. There's something called the Outer Continental Shelf Lands Act. Uh, and, and, and then there's this maintenance and cure that we've been talking about. And those are all different bodies of law. And the, the figuring out which, which law covers you can be kind of complicated. So let's take an example. Let's say you're a, you're an oil rig worker, okay, and you get hurt on an offshore oil rig. All right. Let's say you're working in the derricks and and somebody drops something on you and you get injured. Well, you might be covered by the Jones Act, or you might not. You might be covered by Louisiana state law or Texas state law. It, it's going to depend on a bunch of different factors. One of the factors is if you're hurt on a offshore oil rig that can move, like a jack-up rig, for instance, then you're probably going to be covered by the Jones Act. Well, you could literally be a hundred feet away on a platform instead of a jack-up rig, and if the platform is fixed to the ocean floor, then you're probably not covered by the Jones Act. You're probably covered by a different law either the Outer Continental Shelf Lands Act or General Maritime Law. So one of the reasons that uh, I think it's, it is complicated, and that's, one, that's what I was going to say. One of the reasons I think that most lawyers don't do this is because it is complicated. It's not easy. I mean, you know, th there are areas of law that aren't that complicated, frankly. This is not one of them. And, you know, w one, of the, one of the things I see a lot that, 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 that disturbs me is the employers know it's complicated. They know it's confusing. And they know when you're hurt that, you know, you, you're vulnerable and, and you're working at a disadvantage. And so they use this confusion to try to get leverage over you, to come back to work or to take, you know, some puny settlement that's, that, that doesn't even cover your medical bills or, or your lost wages. So it, it's really important in my mind uh, to get somebody on your side that knows how to navigate this complicated law because it's, it's not easy. I mean, it's not straightforward. I mean, we get into all sorts of different little uh, uh, complications in the law. There, there's a way, actually, if you're hurt offshore where the company can sue you and limit your amount of compensation to the value of the vessel. So th let me give you an example of that. When the when the Deepwater Horizon, the BP oil rig, blew up and sank to the bottom of the ocean, BP filed what's called a limitation of liability proceeding. They sued, they filed first, and they tried to limit their exposure, or Transocean did, the owner of the rig, to the value of this vessel at the bottom of the ocean. And, and that didn't even come close sure. to covering uh, you know, all the damages for, for that oil spill. So, so there's all sorts of uh, different ways that the employers can make this really complicated, and it is complicated, 
And so you need somebody on your side that knows what they're doing. Brian, do the employers or the companies, the different maritime companies that do the oil rigs and do the, all that stuff, do they advise their employees as they're hired what their rights are or if you get injured, this is what you should do or this is the act? Do they do any of that? Not really. I mean, the, when you're hired, what they, what they do is they give you all sorts of safety training and they make you sign all sorts of documents. But anybody that's worked in the industry knows. I mean, I've had family members work in the industry. I've had close friends work in the industry. I've represented hundreds of people that have worked in the industry. Anybody that's listening to me right now that knows anything about the offshore industry knows that even though safety is preached as number one, it's always production. I mean, production is always number one out there. So what, what the companies will do when you get hired is they'll They'll give you all sorts of safety training, make you fill out all sorts of paperwork, and then you'll go out there, and if something happens and you get hurt, they use that paperwork against you in your case. They say, look, you got all this safety training, you signed all these documents, it's your fault. You should have known better. And so, you know, e even if you got hurt because somebody was putting production over safety or speed over safety, you know, they'll say, hey, you should have... You, you, you should have stopped the job. You had the right to stop the job. It's your fault. So they, they use this safety training against you if you get hurt. So it, it's, I mean, it's obviously it's good to get safety training when you work offshore. It's important. I'm not saying it's not. What, what I'm saying is that a lot of times, and anybody that works out there knows this, when you get out there, all that stuff pretty much goes out the window uh, if there's a job to be done and then that stuff that they taught you is used against you later on.